Uh, well, now having talked about uh, Mary Wollstonecraft's life and works, now we shall go ahead with uh, the background to her famous work, Vindication of the Rights of Women, which was published in the year 1792. So this particular work is one of the trial blazing works of feminism. Actually, uh, before that, feminism was not in limelight as such. During the neoclassical period, uh, we understood something about uh, 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 what's her name, Afra Ben's demand for uh, acceptance, uh, but that was not feminism as such. She rather wanted her to be included in the uh, literary tradition of men of the, that time. But when we talk about uh, Mary Uston Craft's work, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, it is a kind of blazing work, a trial blazing works of feminism. You see, it was a beginning, a kind of uh, blaze was you know, there. Means we can say it is a spark of you know, the beginning of feminism. This particular book was published in the year 1792. And this work, Wollstonecraft's work argued that the educational system of her time deliberately trained women to be frivolous and incapable. Now, you can make your own opinions about today's system as well, about today's education system. She's talking about British education system of her period. So she thought that the, the educational system of her time uh, during the late 18th century, we can say, deliberately trained women to be frivolous. Frivolous means of inferior, uh, call means of substandard. Okay, we can say, and of what we call incapable. Means that education was of no use to them. Uh, I rather ask you people to, especially uh, the female students, to take note of this. Now, what is your opinion about today's education system? Is it just like uh, Mary Wollstonecraft's opinion or is it different from that? You need to contemplate over. You need to reflect over this particular issue. So she took a position. She posited means she took a position that an educational system that allowed girls the same advantages as boys would, would result in women who would be not only exceptional wives and mothers, but also capable workers in many professions. Miss Ward exactly, she was asking for equal education. There should not be any kind of discrimination. Means, uh, there shouldn't be a separate education for boys and another kind of education for women. So if the same kind of education as boys get is given allowed to girls, that will be beneficial in not in creating exceptional wives, homemakers, and mothers. Extraordinary exceptional means of uh, having good quality, we can say. And women would be capable workers in many professions, as we see today. You know. Uh, we see that women are proving themselves in different uh, space of professions. So in different professions, they uh, have shown their abilities. So Mary Wollstonecraft was demanding for this kind of opportunity uh, to all women of her nation. Because she thought that uh, there is a kind of discrimination in the prevailing education, British education system of the, her period. And that education system was preventing women from taking proper, uh, what we call, education. That education of, was of no use to her. So that was her position. That was her argument. And other early feminists had made similar pleas for improved education for women. Apart from Olston Craft, even other feminist writers had also, or feminist thinkers had asked, demanded for the same kind of improved education for women. 
but vindication of the rights of women uh, that is uh, Wolfram, Wolfram Kraft's work was unique it was different from these particular works because it suggests that the betterment of women women's status rather be effected through such political change because it can bring a radical reform of national education in national education system so if better education is provided to women that will cause into the betterment of women's status and that will result into political change and even it will bring radical reform in national education systems that's what she thought and such kind of change such radical reform would benefit all society. So in this slight discussion, the publication of vindication caused considerable controversy. You can understand that. In 18th century, it was a kind of courage. It was really very courageous that she could talk about, she could ask for such things. It wasn't, uh, it was a male dominated society. So you might be knowing that women, uh, women were not allowed to even cast their oats in Britain. There was no franchise for uh, you know, British ladies. So they were not allowed to cast their oats during those days. So she was asking for a kind of change, a reform, which could help uh, women's betterment. So from the 1840s, actually the book was written in the year 1792, from the 1840s, Means after writing, after the publication of the vindication of the rights of women, members of the incipient, uh, incipient American and European women's movement, you know, they resurrected some of the book's principles. Means what? These feminist members from America and European countries, they started, you know, thinking over uh, certain principles proposed by Mary Wollstonecraft in their book they restructured it they started you know using these principles and it was a particular influence on american women women's right pioneers such as elizabeth caddy stanton, uh, stanton and margaret fuller this this book was of great influence they got inspired these american women's rights pioneers so the life of Wollstonecraft has been the subject of several biographies. Uh, so even Willem Godwin, you know, who wrote, beginning with her husband's memoir of the author of a vindication of the rights of women, which was published in the year 1798. And uh, it was reissued, uh, edited by Pamela Clement and Gina Luria Walker in 2002. So many memoirs, many of the biographies have been written about Mary Wollstonecraft after her death. And uh, some of the books are written in the 19th century. And these books, these biographies tended to emphasize the scandalous aspects of her life. Means they talked about the negative side. See, they talked about her affairs, not about her work. So this is the problem with, you know, certain thinkers. They don't think positively. Uh, they didn't think about her contribution. They think about. They thought about you know uh, her affairs, scandalous aspects of her life uh, during the 19th century. But with the renewed interest in women's rights in the latter 20th century, she again became the subject of several books. Uh, so one of the examples that I can uh, state here is the collected letters of Mary Wollstonecraft. Uh, which th these letters are assembled assembled by Janet Todd, and this particular collection was published in the year 2003. So this is the background that we need to understand to understand the chapter two of her book, Vindication of the Rights of Women. Uh, 